Our scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 107. Psalms 107. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Their hearts were bowed down with hard labor. They fell down with no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of the darkness and gloom and broke their bonds asunder. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and they drew new, near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, and let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep, for he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits' ends. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of his people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. And there he lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But he raises up the needy out of distress and makes their families like flocks, the upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness stops its mouth. Let those who are wide give heed to these things and consider the steadfast love of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, hopefully we'll never find ourselves literally wandering in a desert wasteland or forced to dwell in a place of deep darkness or sick to the point of death or caught up in a tumultuous storm at sea or even confronted by poisonous creatures who threaten our lives as we see in numbers. But each of us have faced or will face those times when we desperately need the redeeming hand of God. We will all have faced or will face times of uncertainty that may have felt just as troubling as any of those things mentioned in our text. Well, Psalm 107 gives us insight at how to handle those times. 
Recognize the situation you are in. Cry out to God and tell God what you need. Accept the, the, the deliverance that God brings and then give thanks to God and then tell others of his power. So we are to recognize and cry out, tell God, accept his deliverance, give thanks and tell others. Are we doing that? And in the end, remember that it is God, not any earthly strength or power who can provide a habitable place for us and allow us to live the good life given to us by him. So first, we need to cry out to God when we're in over our head. God never said he wouldn't give you more than you can handle. And in fact, if you come to God, he will handle it for and with you. The psalmist knew this well. He cried out to God over and over again. The prophets cried out to God. Daniel, Joseph cried out to God. Even Jesus cried out to God saying, Abba, Father. And he sent the Holy Spirit to us specifically to be our helper, who can even intercede for us when we don't know what to cry out to God for. In addition, Paul instructs us not to worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Second, when God provides for us, we have to accept it. We don't always like the way that God answers a prayer, but he is always faithful. We must trust that all things do indeed work together for those who love the Lord. It's tempting to think that we know what is best, but we are not God and we can't see the big picture. So we must graciously accept how God does provide for us. Thirdly, we must give thanks to God. After all, every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change, according to James. The psalmist repeatedly thanks God for his steadfast love and instructs us to do the same. And Paul tells us to give thanks in all situations. God is always working for our good. Fourthly, we must tell others about God's wonderful works. The psalmist emphasizes this in the 105th Psalm as well, where he says, make known his deeds among the people. And in our passage today, the psalmist specifically invites the people of God, those redeemed by his enduring mercy, to declare that they are redeemed. As one commentator puts it, it would be ungrateful and wrong to be silent about so great a work. This psalm as a whole describes four distinct aspects of God's redemption rescue. To the lost, to the guilty, to the sick, to the storm-tossed. So all these redeemed of the Lord should say so. As Paul says, everyone who calls upon the Lord will be saved. But he also says, how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. So what about all those other people? Those who wander in the wilderness and are sick to the point of death through, new, through no failure of their own. Those battered by the storms of life. Yes, we can cry out to God and hope in his provisions, but we must never forget that those of us who have ample resources and strength are called to be the arms and legs, the hands and feet, the voice of God in this world. God will redeem from the east and the west, from the north and the south, but the redemption of the God, the redemption of God often takes human form. Think of how many times you have felt hurt, lost, or scared. Did it help when one of your Christian brothers or sisters came alongside you? Well, one way of showing thanks is to pay it forward. We are blessed to be a blessing. 
Jesus tells us in Matthew 25 that whatever we do unto the least of these, we are doing unto Jesus himself. So we're expected to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and in prison, to welcome the stranger. And we can also help people emotionally. Paul says that God comforts us to be a comfort for others in 2 Corinthians 1.4. 1 Peter tells us about how spiritual leaders specifically should tend God's flock, but we all have some part to play in tending to God's sheep, not just the quote-unquote leaders. The shepherd has found us and welcomed us into his flock. Once found, we've been asked to become a part of God's search operation. He leaves the 99 just to find that one lost sheep, and we are sent out to be helpers. The Psalms talk about God's steadfast love, or hesed in Hebrew. And in the New Testament, Paul talks about the great love which with he loved us, agape in Greek. But whatever you call it, the point is that God has extended his grace unto us, and the Bible of the whole is a testament of that. God wants to be in relationship with us. Now that is something to be thankful for. And what's more is it's something with which to respond to in faith that re results in good works. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Ephesians 1, 8 through 10. When we are saved, we want others to be saved too. And we should work towards that. Not in order to be saved. That's something that Jesus already did for us. But in response to all that we have been given. Today, are you facing troubles in life? Cry out to God. Ask for help. And when he delivers you, thank him and make his deeds known to others. And respond in faith that impels good works so that others may be rescued from their troubles too. No matter what you face, God's goodness and mercy will never leave you. In fact, he prepares blessings for you in the middle of hard seasons. But these truths aren't always easy to remember, which is why giving thanks matters. Gratitude helps us focus on the only one who is able to turn our problems around for his glory and our good. So right now, let's take a minute to pause and thank God for all he's done in our lives. God, you are good and your steadfast love endures forever. Even in the hardest seasons, we always have a reason to worship you. Thank you for giving us victory and abundant life in Jesus Christ. Although we don't deserve it, you shower us with unconditional love and forgiveness. And so no matter what the future may hold, we will shout for joy because you are with us. You comfort us and bless us in the presence of our enemies. Nothing compares to you and no weapon can stand against you. In all things, we are more than conquerors through you. Be glorified through us, God. Tell us of your wonderful deeds and help others on your behalf. We want our lives to praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.